we only rehearsed about four days from the time we heard, you know, the, you know, Lars had never heard this Nick Cave song before. You know, I hand him the CD, he puts it in his head, and you know, he's playing the song. All of a sudden, we're recording it, you know, less than a week later. Wow. Uh, so there was a lot more kind of spur of the moment stuff, a lot more vibe. Uh, it was a, definitely a lot more fun. We put all these songs on the table and we just digested them and, you know, spit them out Metallica style, you know. There's, there's only so much you can kind of mess with the sounds, you know. Uh, when you go in to hear back a song or to, to listen to a mix, your ear goes right to, you know, I dial in that guitar sound that I love and that will, re you know, it's not going to change that drastically in Lars, you know, his drum sound and things, so it ends up sounding like Metallica. Well, that's kind of the beauty of doing covers. You can do whatever you want with them. They're already kind of there for you. Everything's written, you know. Uh, and if you chop it up and move it around, you can always blame it on, well, it's just a cover, you know. Doing these covers, it, it kind of tests your musicianship, you know. And you'll go and play things that you wouldn't have written on your own. Mm. And it, it, it might, you know, make your fingers move a different way and, you know, uh, spur you on to try something new. Things are damn good, man. <laughs> Things are all right. And uh, like I said about kind of paying these bands back for helping you out in the early days, you know, we, we took their songs and called them ours, you know. <laughs> Metallica live tonight at the Troubadour, you know, half the set is Diamond Head, you know. <laughs> but no one knew and they didn't care, you know. and. Uh, uh, we didn't tell them, so uh, we, we do owe them some. We went into Kirk's basement um, about 30 hours after the last show from the summer tour mm -hmm. and uh, started knocking these songs around. We talked about what songs we were going to come in with the next day and so and so and so and do three or four songs each day and try to just get figure out some kind of handle, you know, yeah. where's it going to go? For a long time we've been talking about, you know, doing another Garage Days type mm. of vibe. Uh, set yourself with a deadline so that you can't get it too perfect, you know, keep it all raw and real nice and like that. Not rehearse it too much, not know the songs too much. Mm. You mm. know, go in and really be able to put our own spin on them. That's been talked about for quite a while. A couple of the choices were already made quite some time ago. And then a lot of them have just come about in the last couple of months here, um, trying to figure out exactly which heroes that we wanted to give the shout out to. You know, right. that we hadn't already covered that. Uh, you know, some people were redoing again Misfits things, and Diamond Head and that are very, very obvious inspirations from Metallica, right? Sure. So we always want to give them a little bit. But uh, the other more obscure things, Nick Cave and Bob Seger and those kind of things, are uh, reaching out a bit, as mm. we can, you know, like we have been doing a lot the last few years. First we try on acoustic instruments, then James would try to sing it this way, and then we do just uh, you know Lars with the tambourine hits mm. and the you know side stick or something like that, trying to feel through it what moods we were going to create. Then we decided, okay, this has got to be Metallica, man. We're Metallica, right? So let's kick it up a little bit, give it some volume, and play the way we play. Go for what you know, type of thing. And so that's how most of them came about. Is that you find a tone that you're comfortable within as a Metallica player and then put it on there. So mm -hmm. we decide together what the tempo is going to be, what the feel is going to be, and then put our own, it has to be our sound still. The most important thing about this really is the fun factor. You know, not having to get like in the Metallica recording mode of everything has to be under such a huge microscope and everything has to be so perfect. Mm -hmm this thing gets to be raw and rough and fun and, you know, sloppy and like it should be, you know, like rock and roll should be. It's very much rock and roll, that's the cool thing. The intention of this is to give credit where credit's due, to mm -hmm. give the shout out to our heroes, man, that is the thing, you know, that's why we do it. 
We're exactly the opposite of what everybody would think. We want to do it because we're saying, yes, you did something for us. If it wasn't for you, we wouldn't be playing like we do. Here you go, man. We were on tour. The tour ended on the f September 14th, and we went straight into my basement September 15th. And uh, we played until, I think, the 18th, and then we went into the studio on the 19th, and we've been working every single day. Mm. And uh, it's been a little grueling, but you know, it's been, it's been good, it's been fun. And it looks like we're going to make our, our, our schedule. And we're going to meet our deadline, which is always good. <laughs> it was more like uh, seeing what we could do, you know, rather than seeing what we would have to get done. I mean, we, we looked at it more as, you know, the potential for these songs and what we, what, what we could do with it creatively rather than, you know, can we do this? You know, are we physically able to do this? I mean, it was more a, a point of, of, of just seeing the potential and seeing what we could do and, you know, realizing the possibilities rather than, than you know, realizing the limitations. I'll tell you how it's been difficult. I, when, when I leave the studio, all I hear in my head is merciful fate, <laughs> you know, uh, diamond head. <laughs> uh, I can't get it out of my head. Now I'll sit there and just roll over in, in, in my sleep and hear these songs in my head. Um, the guitar playing, the actual physical aspect of, of, of the guitar playing is no problem, you know. I, just, I, don't, I didn't really have a problem with that. It's just getting the songs out of my head once I've left the studio. That was, that was the difficult thing. We're definitely, definitely wearing our influences on our sleeves with this one, again. <laughs> um, yeah, you know, you know, this album is a bit bi biographical, autobiographical, in a musical sense, because these are all bands that have been such a huge inspiration to us, you know, and a huge influence on us. And by listening to this album, you can tell where we got a lot of our ideas, really. I mean, <laughs> it's just plain and simple. You know, th these are some of the most influential bands in, in Metallica's career. The whole idea about the project, if you generalize, is that because of the nature of our own records, uh, the sort of how we write these songs and then spend sort of like a year recording them and going over every single detail with a, you know, just a fine comb and sitting there and analyzing everything, what we need all the time and have throughout a career is a project like this to balance mm. the sort of, um, silly ways that we record our own material. We could never be this, um, uh, I don't think we could ever be this instinctive and this spontaneous. I think that's, that's what's so cool about Metallica doing cover songs, that is it, it gives us a chance to go in the studio and have a different kind of fun than, than the sort of process of making our own records and at the same time I think now we're at the point in our career where we when we used to pick cover songs and record cover songs in the early days we would sort of stay more within our own territory, our own parameters and sort of pick all these sort of obscure British metal songs and so on but now we realize with this project that we could be and want it to be a lot more adventurous in the selection and, and for the first time, also picking songs by artists that, that we tremendously respect, but um, that we could also take these songs and kind of alter them enough and make them our own.
We met over in Kirk's basement and we sort of sat there with our instruments and went, okay, now what? And we started basically going through potential songs that we had thrown at each other during sort of, you know, late night drinking binges in hotel rooms and whatever and sitting on the plane and blah, blah, blah. And we had a sort of a, a rough outline of some songs that we thought could work for this project. And um, that was just about four weeks ago. We spent almost a week over at Kirk's house sort of getting it together, mm -hmm. figuring out what we're doing. And then we came here and having recorded and mixed uh, 11 songs in that period for us is just sort of unimaginable. <laughs> when we're making our own Metallica records, I'm the one that's probably the most anal and, and sit there and really go through everything in detail. What I, I was keen on with this project was trying to go as far in the opposite direction as possible. And there were some things when we were recording stuff off the floor in this very room about two, three weeks ago, where it was like, hey, wait a minute, that sounds great as is, just the four of us off the floor or whatever, let's just leave it. I was quite keen on trying to preserve the moments that were created in this room instead of then sitting and sort of doctoring them up afterwards. But at the same time, I mean, making records and being in a band and choosing songs and recording songs and, and all that, it, it's really, I mean, the key thing is balance and you have to find the balance that works within the unit. And, um, and I think we found that the fact you said that we could sit here three weeks later and actually have a finished record is an amazing feat in itself. And when you listen to these songs um, as a bunch, that they all work in their own ways because we're comfortable playing them. Uh, we admire and respect the songs, we admire and respect the artists, and it's that the key thing for us is that we have to be comfortable playing these songs and when we're comfortable with something we can make almost anything no matter how foreign it is mm. at least on paper sound like Metallica it's been a very um, brief spontaneous crazy adventure it's it's you, I can't remember the last time we made a record like this. You know, every time we go into the studio, we sort of prepare ourselves for these elongated stretches and, and you know, four weeks ago, none of this existed. stuff is we, we kind of want to get the heavier stuff done before this turns to mix, right? Well, it'd be great because of the guitar sounds. Okay. If not, we're going to have to get the guitar sounds over there. Well. That'd be cool as, a, as an uncredited, uh, like, uh, what do you call it? Segway. Segway. Yeah. Huh? It's called a segue. Yeah.
Thank you, Segue into the tomorrow show. comes in let's let's have the band come in but let's not come in like at the level we came in at the chorus let's come in let's come in like full band but let's mm -hmm. it's not there it's Yeah, there I go to that place. 
Turn the Page was just some song that Lars heard on the radio and, and loved it. Hey, have you ever heard this, you know, Turn the Page, Bob Seger's like, yeah, I really actually like that song, the lyrics are us. Um, so that was a, that was an easy choice. Actually, I can't stand Bob Seger <laughs> and uh, uh, I've never met him, so nothing really against him, but every time you know, growing up, the radio, just take them old records off the shelf. That's all I ever heard on the radio. It was like, you know, play some, you know, Aerosmith or something, you know. Mm. I, I would just turn the radio off. It would just drive me up the wall. Um, but m it was more the song. This song, and lyrically especially, it belonged to Metallica, just, mm. you know, on the road again. It's just, we're the road dogs, and that, that's one song that we can really relate to. And uh, it came out really well. This song, um, to my knowledge, is the only one that we knew we were going to do years ago mm -hmm. because of the lyrical content and that it was so much Metallica. Mm -hmm. I mean, just the words the that it says, it, that's Metallica. Yeah. We take our music to the people more than anybody in our genre of music, more, you know, for over the years and years and years. We've been the ones that went on the road and mm -hmm. did it. And so that could not be more true for any other band. And so we knew that way back when, I'd say five years, seven years ago, maybe even, we knew we were going to do this song. Um, how we were going to spin it, we didn't know. We didn't know if we were going to try to keep the folksy vibe of it, you know, electric piano, what the heck was going to happen until we actually put our hands on the instruments. For me, in 1973, this record came out. I was 10 years old. My brother, Greg, had it in the first week it was out, you know. So I, I've known that song for 25 years. Wow. And have, when I first heard it back again uh, four weeks ago, after not hearing it for years and mm -hmm. years, or just it blowing by on the radio or whatever, and actually listening to the song and singing along and not forgetting one word and knowing all the nuances and all that kind of thing, and, you know, this yeah, kind yeah. of vibe when you get just moved by a song. 
And that is one of those songs that always did it for me. For some reason, mm -hmm. I never knew that this would come to this, and you know, in my sure. career or whatever, that we would actually put our stamp on it. But um, for that reason, it's close to here for me. I was born and raised in Michigan, and so was he. Yeah. And so that tie always, you know, just like somebody's from where you, you know, you sure. get that kind of thing. You're kind of proud of it or whatever. I have to admit, out of all these bands, I wasn't a big Bob Seger fan <laughs> at all. But, you know, when someone suggested Turn the Page, and I thought about it, and I, th I thought, wow, Turn the Page, Bob Seger. And, you know, I don't know. I don't know if I, I, I can relate to that one. But once I, I heard it and I listened to the lyrics, I thought, wow, this is just a perfect song for James to sing. I mean, this, is, this, this song says James Hetfield all over it, you know. This is... This is a Metallica song, you know, just waiting to be happened, right. or a Metallica cover song, just waiting to be ha to be realized. Bob Seger is an artist. It's not somebody who has sort of done a tremendous amount for me in terms of just the music that inspires me. But that song, so there you talk about a song more so than a catalog or an artist or a history. I was driving across the Golden Gate Bridge right up here and it was on the radio and I heard the song, song a thousand times before and for some reason I turned it up and I listened to it from a different point of view and when I heard it from a different point of view it was just like, wait a minute, that song has Hetfield written all over it in the lyrics and the phrasing and the melody, and I think that one day down the line we could do that song some serious justice. Wow. And uh, more so than sitting down and going sort of like, I want to record a Bob Seger song, mm. but just that song itself is such a moment and it just has like such a, a vibe to it that you can identify with uh, just the whole road thing and the kind of sadness and the bleakness of it all. Thank you, Hit. Thanks, Les. The end of time. Yeah, take off your dress. There's a devil waiting outside your door. There's a devil waiting outside your door. And he's barking and praying and pawing at the floor. And he's howling with pain and asking for more. There's a devil waiting outside your door. While the empire's burned Come on. 
on, Mars. Can you just sustain that so yeah. it doesn't sound so stiff? Yeah. Okay.
A very uh, <coughs> interesting idea. Uh, Two the first. <laughs> this is classic stuff. Well, what he does, these are just the negatives. He burns them. You know, he's like, he's a guy that did the picture of John there. Uh -huh. So he, this is just the rough. Then he burns them in a printing process, and they come out looking like really cool. <clears throat> That's pretty cool shit. Definitely. Mm -hmm. Huh? He's good, man. He's really good. Um, what's going on is Bob is sleeping his hangover off. That's what's going on. <laughs> <laughs> While George Marino is, as always, working hard, and I'm just sort of floating around looking at CDs. What's George Marino doing here? George Marino takes our master mixes, which would be these, 
and he tweaks them so they all, when you put them next to each other on a record, that they all have somewhat the same levels, they all have somewhat the same frequencies, they all kind of work together as a unit, wouldn't you say? Isn't that sort of mastering in its like yeah. most layman terms? Yeah, we try to max everything out and get everything balanced properly so it's one right. continuous listening record. And, mm -hmm. and it's loud. And loud. It's loud. And, loud. <laughs> <laughs> and find all the sweet spots and, yeah. and then we play up on that a little bit. Let's see what I have here. Yeah. 